فؤادك الايام فتا فصل واما الاجماع فهو اتفاق العلماء المجتهدين على حكم حادثه The Sheikh uh, in this fasl in this part he's going to be speaking about al ijma' he's going to be talking about ijma' ijma' means unanimous agreement now who does the ijma' what is a ijma' ijma' it is an agreement it is an agreement for who ittifaq it's a agree an agreement of who al ulama the scholars which scholars al mujtahidina the scholars who are mujtahids who reached darajatul ijtihad when the sheikh said ittifaq al ulama al mujtahidina what are the things that are absent from this that if they are scholars from other other ummah so we have to say ittifaq al ulama al mujtahidina min hadhihi al ummah it has to be from this ummah it can't be from the previous nations and it seems that the sheikh didn't say min hadhihi al ummah because that is important and so it's ittifaq it's an agreement if there comes a disagreement this is not called an ijma' it's called a khilaf and it has to be the ulama the general mass are not considered the general mass are not their ijma' they it's not considered anything the ulama here are the mujtahidin those who have reached the level of ijtihad what have they unanimously agreed upon ala hukmi hadithatin what they agree upon that ijma' here is it has to be a matter which can be that matter has to be from the religion of islam if they all agree that the mubtada is marfu' this is not called ijma' according to the ulama of usuliyin it has to be in what it has to be fi amri dini in a religious matter and that issue there has to be a agreement of the ulama of that time regarding that matter now the scholars they have a discussion when can we say that this all this the ulama of that time how many years is it what is the period of time when what is the next generation when do we calculate it there's this tafsil in this matter the other thing that the sheikh has mentioned which here right now is what ba'da wafatihi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam al ijma' can only happen after the prophet's death because whatever happens at his time is either it's either the prophet's action or it's the prophet's speech or it's the prophet's consent and it falls under the prophet's consent alayhi salatu wa sallam so there's no place for ijma' when the prophet is alive alayhi salatu wa sallam you with me while he's alive where's the hujja where's the proof his speech his action and that which he consent he consents to alayhi salatu wa sallam so that is what ijma' means naam فمتى قطعنا بإجماعهم وجب الرجوع إلى إجماعهم ولم تحل مخ مخالفتهم. The Sheikh now he says فمتى whenever قطعنا we cut بإجماعهم we cut the decision that this is إجماع. We are if we reach the, we say this is yep it's, it's agreed upon. Are you with me? If we say that the إجماع happened they agreed. Are you with me? If we say that. Wajaba it's obligatory. Ila ijma'ihim. Wajaba ruju'u ila ijma'ihim. It is obligatory for us to go back to their consent. We have to take it we have to take it into consideration. We can't just dis, disregard it. Walam tahilla mukhalafa tuhum and it's not permissible to oppose them. They cannot be opposed to ulama. Now the ijma' is two types. The ijma' is two types. Ijma' which is sarih. An ijma' which is غير صريح. An ijma' which is clear. That this scholar says this, and 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 this scholar says this. All of them are what? They are saying a matter directly. All of them are saying it. It becomes a... It becomes an ijma' which is direct. Are you with me? There's another one which is an ijma' which is غير صريح. It's not direct. And the one that's not direct is what? One scholar or two scholars or, or, or a handful of scholars, they say something at a time. And there doesn't, there, there, it doesn't come out a statement of any other scholar of that time opposing that which they said. So the other scholars, the scholars will say that this mas'ala is a mahalu ijma'. It's a unanimous agreement amongst the ulama because the rest, they were silent about it and they didn't oppose it. 
They did not what? Oppose it. Now some people's arguments that they put forward is, how about if the other has, haven't heard it? What we say is, Allah wa ta'ala, who told us that we have to follow the consensus of the ummah, or the consensus of the ulama, Allah would have made us know it. Because the ijma' is the evidence within our religion. And we have to, we have to implement ijma'. Allah tabarak wa ta'ala said in the Quran, وَمَن يُشَاقِقِ الرَّسُولَ مِن بَعْدِ مَا تَبَيَّنَ لَهُ الْهُدَىٰ وَيَتَّبِعْ غَيْرَ سَبِيلِ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ نُوَلِّهِ مَا تَوَلَّى وَنُسْلِهِ جَهَنَّمَ وَسَاءَتْ مَصِيرًا In that ayah, Surah An-Nisa ayah 115, Allah is telling us subhanahu wa ta'ala that anybody who goes against the path of who? وَمَن يُشَاقِقِ الرَّسُولِ The Prophet. And then Allah didn't just stop there. Allah then said, carried on saying, وَيَتَّبِعْ And he follows a path. غَيْرَ سَبِيلِ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ A path which is other than the path of the believers. So the virtual istidlal here is تَوَعَدَمْ Allah tabarak wa ta'ala gave, gave them a severe warning. And a punishment has been promised for the people who go against the Prophet sallallahu path. And also who go against the path of the pihut and the path of who? غَيْرَ سَبِيلِ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ Other than the path of the believers. This severe warning shows what? فَدَلَّ الْوَعِيدُ عَلَىٰ أَنَّهُ حَرَامُ This warning indicates that it's haram to go against the believers. And it shows what? وَدَلَّ عَلَىٰ وُجُوبِ اتِّبَاعِ سَبِيلِهِمْ And it showed that it's obligatory to follow the path of who? It's obligatory to follow the path of the, the believers. Also the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said in a hadith, أَهْلُ السُّنَنْ narrated it. When I say أَهْلُ السُّنَنْ, who do I mean? Abu Dawood narrated it for sure. Ibn Majah narrated it for sure, and Tirmidhi narrated it for sure, Nasa'i did not narrate the hadith. These three narrated it. And the hadith is Hassanun Lighayri. Hassanun Lighayri. Shaykh al Albani, the hadith 1331, he authenticated this hadith. That the messenger said, In ummati, my ummah, la tajtami'u ala dalala. My ummah will not agree upon misguidance. The messenger said this, alayhi salatu wasalam. Where's the evidence in this hadith? This hadith, the worship istidlal, the way we're taking evidence out of it is that nafyu al ummah, the messenger negated that the ummah will unite upon what? Ala dalalah upon misguidance. So what does that show us? That when they do unite on something and that they do come on a matter, that their ijtima is haq and it's the truth in which they have come together on. And that is what ijma means. That is what? That is what ijma' means. Naam. Wala buddha an yakuna hadhi al-ijma' mustanidhan ila dalalat al-kitabi wa sunnah. The shaykh here, he's saying that it is necessary. It is, wala buddha, it is necessary. An yakuna hadhi al-ijma' that this ijma' it is necessary for this ijma' to be what? Mustanidhan, it has to lean on. It has to be backed up with. إِلَىٰ دَلَالَةِ الْكِتَابِ وَالسُنَّةِ A evidence which is from the kitab and the sunnah has to back it up. Now, what you guys have to understand is there is no ijma' that can't be without kitab and sunnah aslan. Or it's not even ijma'. So this point of the shaykh fihi nadar, there's a look to it. وَلِلَاكِ شَيْخُ الْإِسْلَامِ تَيْمِ رَحِمَ اللَّهِ He mentions in his majmu' al-fatawa, رَحِمَهُ اللَّهِ He said, وَلَا يُوجَدُ It is not found. مَسْأَلَةَ أَيْ مَتْهَا يَتَّفِقُ يُتَّفَقُ عَلَيْهَا in which the Ummah unanimously agree upon. أَمَا وُجِدَ الْإِجْمَعُ فِيهَا The Ijma' is found in it. عَلَيْهَا إِلَّا وَفِيهَا نَصٌ Except there is a text in this matter. There is a text that backs it up. There is a, there is a text that backs it uh, uh, and up. So, those three points. We learn three points from the matter of Ijma'. Three points of the matter of Ijma' before we move on to Qiyas. First of all, we learn the definition. The first point that we learn is there's a, the definition of ijma' that the shaykh said, and we said he missed out two things. Mainly he missed out two things. The th second point that we learned from ijma' which is what? That whenever ijma' is found and it's pre present, it is obligatory that we go and we refer back to that ijma' and it is not permissible for us to oppose it. And I gave you two evidences that prove that. This ayah in Surah 2 and Nisa ayah 115, وَمَا يُشَاكِكَ إِلَىٰ آخِرِ الْآيَةِ and the hadith in Ahl al-Sunnah narrated other than Imam al-Nasai which the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said inna ummati my ummah la tajtami ala al-dalala they, they do not agree upon misguidance. The third thing that we benefited from ijma' which is that 
that the ijma is always mustanid. It's always relying on a dalala min al-kitab wa sunnah. A evidence from the, from the kitab and the sunnah. And now we're going to go into the qiyas. Naam. Wa amma al-qiyas sahih As for the qiyas which is sahih. Now we have to realize the qiyas which is sahih, brothers, is justice. Justice is qiyas sahih. A qiyas sahih is justice. Islam is built upon justice. Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah said, وَالْقِيَاسُ الصَّحِيحِ The qiyas which is sahih, it is from what? It's min bab al-adl, it falls under the chapters of justice. How? فَإِنَّهُ تَسْوِيَةٌ بَيْنَ الْمُتَمَاثِلَيْنِ Because it's you making two things equal to one another. You're giving it justice. Both of them are the same. وَتَفْرِيقُ بَيْنَ الْمُخْتَلِفَيْنِ And you're also differing between two things that are different to one another. وَدَلَالَةُ الْقِيَاسُ الصَّحِيحِ the proof for correct analogy is what? Huh? The, the, so now we want to know what is the dhabit for the uh, qiyas which is sahih. How can I know that this analogy is correct? The analogy which is correct, the shaykh says, وَدَلَالَةُ الْقِيَاسِ الصَّحِيحِ is what? تُوَافِقُ دَلَالَةَ النَّصِي It will go hand in hand with the text. It goes with the kitab and the sunnah. فَكُلُّ قِيَاسٍ Any analogy خَالَفَ دَلَالَةُ النَّصِ That goes against the evidence that's taken from the kitab and the sunnah, this is what? فَهُوَ قِيَاسٌ فَاسِدْ That is a qiyas which is fasid. So we learned two things from Shaykh al-Islam al statement. The first thing that we learned from Shaykh al-Islam al statement is that qiyas which is sahih falls under the chapters of justice. That two individuals who have something in common, or two things that have something in common, you bring them together. And you deal with them in the same way. Also, Two things which are different, you're fair enough to distinguish between the two and say these two are not the same. And we, the second thing that we learned from it, which is the qiyas, which is sahih, is the qiyas that does not oppose a text. And any qiyas that opposes a text is a qiyas which is fasidul i'tibar. The usuliyin, they call it what? Fasidul i'tibar. It is baseless and it's not taken into consideration. Naam. فهو الحاق now the Sheikh is going to give us the definition of what a Qiyas is. That is the definition of a Qiyas. Qiyas, the definition is huwa ilhaq. Ilhaq means um, it comes from the word lahiqa. Lahiqa means what? When you reach up with somebody who's preceded you. You're reaching up with somebody who has preceded you, who's gone before you. So for example, you say I reach up with the bus. Are you with me? Now, the word ilhaq here means that the asal is already there. And you may, you reach the fara to the asal. You bring it to the asal. That's what you do. So, qiyas is built on, on four pillars. And that's what's going to happen right now. Pay attention. What you do is, you have the asal is always what? The asal is the text that's already there. The asal is always going to be the dalalatul nas. It's the text, the kitab and the sunnah. The kitab and the sunnah. The Prophet sallallahu look what he said here right now. What did he say? The Prophet said, لا يقضي القاضي A judge, a person should not judge وهو غضبان whilst he is angry. The hadith is sahih al-Bukhari and muslim So this hadith is nahyun, a prohibition. Regarding what? That if a person is angry, he should not judge. This is the asal. This is the asal because the Prophet said this, alayhi salatu wasalam. The fara' will be what? If a person is going through a depression which is muz'ij, or the person is kha'if, he's excessively scared, his fear is what? Uh, too much. Or a person which is hunger, ju' shadid, he's very hungry. All of those are fara' and they follow the what? The asal. But then we don't have a text for fear. And we don't have a ruling for depression. Or we don't have a ruling for what? A person who is excessively hungry. We don't have that. But that's, the, that's what we do in the Qiyas for. So this is called Fara. The Asal is what? The anger. Because you have a text for it. So I'm dragging these ones and I'm bringing it to the Asal. Ilhaqu Far'in. This is the Fara. Which is the, which is the, uh, the hem. The khawf 
and the ju'ah. Ju Are you with me? And I'm bringing it to what? I'm bringing it to be aslin. I'm bringing it to an asl. The asl is what? The anger. Why am I bringing it to that? Why? What's the reason? There is a reasoning that they both have in common, which is they both tamper with your thought process. That's what they both have in common. So now I want you to realize, inshallah ta'ala, based on that definition, what qiyas means. Qiyas, the sahih, means it has a hukum which they both share. Which was the both the ruling that they both share here, which is an you prohibition. You're not allowed to judge when you're angry, the same way you're not allowed to judge if you're excessively hungry, or if you're excessively depressed, or if you're excessively what? Scared. So they're both prohibited. They have the same ruling. How do they have the same ruling? How have I reached the conclusion of giving them both the same, the same ruling? The way I've reached it is by, by what? They both have the same reasoning. They ta tamper with your what? They both tamper with your, uh, both sides. The asal and the farah, they tamper with your thought process. You can't think properly. So we have an asal, we have a farah, we have a hukum, and we have a illa. Those four pillars is what a qiyas stands on. Now. فَمَتَا نَصَ الشَّارِعُ عَلَى مَسْأَلَةٍ وَوَصَفَهَا بِوَصْفٍ أَوِسْتْ أَوِسْتَنْ بَطَ الْعُلَمَاءُ أَنَّهُ شَرَعَهَا لِذَلِكَ الْوَصْفِ ثُمَّ وَجَدَ ذَلِكَ الْوَصْفَ فِي مَسْأَلَةِ أُخْرَى فِي مَسْأَلَةٍ أُخْرَى لَمْ يَنُصَ الشَّارِعُ عَلَى عَيْنِهَا عَيْنِهَا مِنْ غَيْرِ فَرْقٍ بَيْنَهَا وَبَيْنَ النُّصُوصِ وَجَبَ إِلْحَاقُهُمْ بِهَا فِي حُكْمِهَا لِأَنَّ الشَّارِعَ حَكِيمٌ لَا يُفَرِّقُ بَيْنَ الْ بين ال بين ال متماثل بين المتماثلات في في أوصافها كما لا يجمع بين ال بين ال مختلفات. The Sheikh here now exactly what I said and I explained to you guys based on the Hadith لا يقضي القاضي وهو غضبان. He's explaining that for basically in which is what فمتى whenever نص الشارع there comes a text in the Kitab and the Sunnah. Ala mas'alatin a matter. Okay? Wa wasafaha bi wasfin and it gives it a description. Which is, what, did, what was the description that he gave here? The description he gave here is prohibition. Are you with me? We have a description here. Okay? Awistanbatal ulama'u or the scholars, they extract from it. So sometimes, uh, the Sheikh is teaching, teaching you here. Sometimes the, it comes by way which is Mansus. We know it by the Nas tells us it, this description. And sometimes the description is found by what? By way of istimbat. The ulama will extract it. And I mentioned this in Qawaid al Fiqiyah. How will the ulama extract it? They will extract it based on the qawa they will base it on the maqasid al sharia The objectives of the sharia They will base it on that when they extract it. Awistan batal ulama annahu shara'aha li dalika al wasfi. They will state Allah legislated this matter for this by way of istimbat. So two ways we, we will know the wasf. The wasf is known by two ways. The description is known by two ways. Either by Nas sarih am a mansusun ali, as they say, which is mansus. You have a text for it. Or it's what? Istimbat. The ulama will extract it. And they will say, Allah legislated this matter for this. Thumma after that. After we found the, the wasf, the description is here. Okay? We find the description here. Thumma wajada dalika al wasf. في مسألة أخرى لم ينص الشارع على على عينها، and we find another mat another thing another dis another we find another thing that shares the same description of the previously mentioned matter، but this thing he says لم ينص الشارع على عينها، but the شارع didn't mention this other one، which is the issue of what hunger and the issue of what uh, depression and the issue of fear. The Sharia didn't mention this. The one that the Sharia mentioned is what? Al Ghadab. And it gave it a description. This is a description. Ghadab is a description. 
Good. Naam. Lam yanussa shari'u ala ainiha. Min ghayri, but there isn't the min ghayri farqin, when there is no difference. The two of them have no difference. Min ghayri without farqin, a difference. Baynaha, between the one that the text mentioned. Huh? Oh, sorry, uh, sorry, min ghayri farqin, baynaha, a bayna, bayna, between the one, lam yanussa shari'u, that the shari'u didn't mention. وبين النصوص and the one that the shari' mentioned the one that the text come came regarding then what do we do then wajaba it's obligatory on us ilhaquha to drag the one that wasn't mentioned to the one that was mentioned biha fi hukmiha in its ruling drag it and say both of them are haram why why is that the case why do we do that li'anna the reason is because ash-shari' hakimun the legislator Allah is wise. لا يفرق بين المتماثلات. Allah will not, Allah will not differ between things that are the same. Allah wouldn't. Subhanahu wa taala. He won't give them different rulings when they are the same. في أوصافها in its description. كما لا كما لا يجمع بين المختلفات مخت كما لا يجمع sorry بين المختلفات. The same Allah تبارك وتعالى. He will not bring together those which differ. The Sharia, what does it not do? Whatever that are not the same, they distinguish between it. And whatever are the same, they bring it together. And this is what you have to realize. The Sharia didn't come to state everything. Mm -mm. The Sharia didn't come to state everything. It gives you some uh, matters and then for you to realize anything that's like it, bring it back to it. I use this as your uh, marking board. Naam. وهذا القياس الصحيح هو الميزان الذي أنزله الله. And that is what. Um, and that is the قياس which is صحيح. What, what does he mean by that? Which is the قياس صحيح? I already told you it's the قياس that the حكم, ها. Huh? That you give both of them are based with these three. You get the hukum correctly by doing what? By you having the asal and the fara'. Both of them have what in common? A illa tajma'u baynahuma. That bring them together. Okay? That you are able to do that. Now, what, are, what is the evidence for qiyas? And what's the dalil for qiyas? The dalil for qiyas is qawluhu ta'ala Allah's statement in Surah Al-Anbiya, Ayah 104. Allah said in the ayah, kama bada'na, like the way I started you guys, كما بدأنا أول يوم started أول خلق نعيد the first time that I created you the way I made you I will bring you back to that original form the way you were كما بدأنا the way we started you guys off the first way when we created you Allah said I will bring you back to your original form سورة الأنبياء آية 104 what what is the وجه الاستدلال of this what is the وجه الاستدلال of this آية the way to the istidlal of the ayah is Allah is using a tashbih. Allah tabarak wa ta'ala is comparing between what? That the way he's going to bring you back to, he's doing a qiyas with it how you used to be at the beginning. Like it won't be hard for him subhanahu wa ta'ala to bring you back huh? because of the fact that, huh? because of the fact that he brought you out in the first place. And that is a qiyas of the original one. Also, the other hadith that clearly shows it, uh, or points it out as well, is the hadith narrated by Bukhari and Muslim. And the Rajul and Ayman atta Rasul and atta Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he came to the Prophet. And then he said, Ya Rasulullah, O Messenger of Allah, Wuli Dali, my wife has given birth to a black child. My wife has a black child to give birth to. So he's trying to say that my wife did something wrong. She must have went and cheated on me. Now the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said to him, Halaka min ibil, do you have a camel? The man said, Naam, yes I do. He said to him, Ma alwanuha, what are the color, colors of your, what are the colors of your camel? He said, Humrun, red. The color of my camels are red. The messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, Hal fiha min awraq, do you have within them those which are colors, the color isn't, but it's whitish, close to whitish. He said, Naam, yes. The Prophet said, where did this come from? If the, all of them were red. 
Then where did he bring this color from? Then the man didn't know. He went quiet. The Prophet said to him, "La'allahu nazatu irq." Maybe there was a vein, meaning in the forefathers there was somebody who had that color in which he took it from. So here the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam gave him a qiyas. On what? On something he understands which is Kamul. He's a Bedouin. Are you with me? 